Hi everyone, Lou here. Uh, last year I did an introductory class for new students that I called FRC Robot A to Z. And the idea was to introduce new students to what a typical FRC robot may contain to jumpstart the brain to recognizing a new set of terms and lingo. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, COVID-19 pandemic uh, has kept us out of the workroom. So I grabbed my camera, shot some footage, and made a series of four videos to help fill the gap. Uh, as you watch these, jot down any questions that you may have, and we'll, we'll meet virtually later for a Q&A session. The robot that we're looking at here is from Infinite Recharge uh, from the 2020 ch uh, challenge, which will then be reused for 2021. And uh, so let's just go around and um, see what the parts are. Okay, let's start from down below. Um, drivetrain. When we talk about the drivetrain, we're talking about the, the parts that, that make the robot go. Uh, that is to go forwards, backwards, and turn. And uh, in this case, we have uh, the, a gearbox. And let's see if I can get a better picture of the gearbox. So the gearbox is this piece right here. Now, I'm not going to tip the robot on its side to show you the innards. Um, but the gearbox takes power from the motors and reduces them down to by a certain speed ratio, by a certain ratio, to increase torque and to decrease the RPM. And then it drives the wheels. Now, in this case, you can see that there are three wheels on each on this side. There's three on the other side, and they are actually driven by these belts. Okay, there's different ways we can drive a wheel. Um, we can use they used to we used to use chains, and now we have belts. Um, belts are quieter and they're lighter. And let's see if we can how close we can get in here. Probably not very close. This um, uh, here we go. This gives you a, perhaps a slightly better view. Let's see. Okay. So back down here are the sprockets that that engage uh, the belt. Well, oh, here we go. This wheel we took off because um, we were making some changes right before the uh, pandemic hit. And uh, so this is a sprocket, and you can see that the belt will engage in these little ridges. Okay? Um, this bolt here is our shaft, and it extends out to the other side, right over here. Okay? Um, the, you can see that the wheels we're using are pneumatic, meaning that they're filled with air. And that would, then we picked these wheels by ch for by choice because of the the challenge that we had to uh, to meet, which involved climb possibly having to go over obstacles of a certain height, and so um, so we thought we felt these would be the, the wheels to use. Um, there are other choices, um, and uh, I'll probably insert them into this video to show you some of the other types of wheels that are typical um, in a, in a FRC drivetrain. Here are some pictures of robot wheels that I pulled from Andy Mark's website. We have high grip and smooth generic wheels, mechanism and omni wheels, and finally plection wheels. Wheels come in different diameters and thicknesses, and each has its pros and cons. It's your job as a designer to consider the trade-offs before selecting a set of wheels. Now here's another view of the gearbox on the side, that's this um, gray box over there and those two black cylinders are motors those two motors are called SIMS C -I -M, and they're pretty standard motors for FRC for drivetrains they're, they're fairly powerful uh, and um, as you can see there's two of them and these two drive just that one gearbox on, one, on this side of the robot and what you don't see uh, maybe you can see the black cylinder back there there's two more that drive the other side so there's four motors in total um, two per side now motors keep changing. There are, uh, I, should, I should say, motors keep, the motor technology keeps changing, keeps evolving, and there are some uh, better and more efficient motors on the market uh, on the market that we are allowed to use. Now we can't just go and use any motor. Motors are, we're limited to those that are approved for FRC use, and and that list uh, changes every year. Uh, sometimes an old motor is no, is no longer allowed, but then there, be, there might be some new ones added in, and uh, so that's something you have to kind of. Um, 
gauged year to year. You look at your inventory. You look at the allowed the, the, the rules and uh, publish that year, and decide what you want to use. Okay. So that I think covers the drivetrain. So while we're talking about motors, let's see what other motors we have here. Now down below, in the smiley sticker there, but you can see there's a motor here. This is what they call a gear motor. And a gear motor is really just a motor, which is this gray thing with the gearbox attached to it. Okay, so um, it may sound, you know, you may think it's a fancy, uh, it's a word that's a specialized device. It's really just a motor and a gearbox. All right. And uh, that one, I think, is, is called a PG-27, I believe. Uh, 27 meaning it's a 27 to 1 gear reduction. So that gearbox will reduce by 27 to 1. Two very useful motor and gearbox combinations we've been allowed to use are the Bosch seat motor and the snowblower motor. Each is a motor with an integrated gearbox. Brushless motors are relatively new to FRC, and the Neo motor is such an example. Brushless motors may have integrated controllers or specific external motor controllers, which are not compatible with those used with brush motors. All right. Um, another, another motor is up here. This, see the red motor there with the bluish gearbox? So that's actually not a gear motor because that's sold as two separate components. A motor, which is the RS-775, and then the gearbox, which is from Bainbot. In fact, you can probably see um, the... Uh, the writing on the side there it says Bainbot on it. Um, and I, I forgot the gear ratio on that one. Let's see, does it say on the side? It says 20 to 1. So that's a 20 to 1 gear reduction. Okay. Let's see. Now here's another motor on the side of the robot. This one is a, this little black cylinder is similar to the SIM motor you saw earlier, but it's shorter. And this is called a mini SIM. It has about two-thirds the power of a SIM and about two-thirds the size. It's tied to this uh, bluish um, uh, gearbox, which I believe is a 64 to 1 gearbox. And, it's, and it holds, it's tied to this um, strap. And I wish I could show you what it does, but basically, if you can imagine the strap being tied up here, it's reeling in. It's, it's, um, it's really it's pulling that whole the whole strap in. Now here's another motor here mounted vertically. Um, there is also again that there's a motor which is that gray piece right here. Um, there's a uh, gearbox above it. All right. Okay, so so that kind of shows you all the different gear, uh, gearboxes, motors. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on this robot. Let's take a minute and look at how a motor or gearbox turns a wheel. If the wheel is not driven by the shaft, the shaft can be smooth. It's just a metal rod and the wheel turns freely on the shaft but is not driven by the shaft. But if you want to drive that wheel from the motor or gearbox, you need to mechanically link the shaft with the wheel. One way to do this is to use a keyed shaft. Here we have a sim motor whose shaft has a slot cut into it, a keyway. A metal key is inserted into the keyway, which mates with another keyway on, say, a hub. So the key locks the hub to the shaft so they stay together. The hub is then mounted to whatever we want to turn, like a wheel. A simpler method gaining in popularity is the use of a hex shaft. The output shaft on this gearbox is hexagonal and can drive a hex hub just like the key shaft, or it can directly drive a sprocket or wheel saving material and space. This concludes part one of this video series. Don't forget to jot down your questions for a later Q&A.